2 Kings chapter number 7. I know that every church people come late. And I've preached against it several times. Some people say, oh, I want to time the word. Some people be in when the time, when the word has been concluded. But that's not even very, that, that couldn't be as sad as you come into church one day, Jesus has come and gone. Hallelujah. Second Kings chapter number 7, I'm going to read verses 1 through to 8. Second Kings chapter 7, verses 1 through to 8. Excuse me. Then Elisha said, Hear ye the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord, Tomorrow, about this time, shall a measure of flour, of fine flour, be sold for how much? A shekel. And two measures of barley for a shekel in the gate of Samaria. Then the Lord on whose hand the king leaned answered the man of God and said, Behold, if, God, if the Lord will make windows in heaven, might these things be? And he said, Behold, thou shalt see it with thine eyes, but shalt not eat thereof. And there are four leprous men. Ever say four leprous men. At the entering in of the gate, and they said one to another, Why sit we here until we die? And I said to your neighbor, ask your neighbor, Why sit we here until we die? Say that one more time. Verse number four. If we say we will enter into the city, then the farming in the land in the city, there's, there's farming in the city, and we shall die there. And if we sit here, we die also. Now, therefore, come, and let us fall unto the host of the Syrians. If they save us alive, we shall live. If they kill us, we shall but die. And they rose up in the twilight to go into the camp of the Syrians. And when they were come to the utmost part of the camp of Syria, behold, there was no man there. For the Lord had made the host of the Syrians to hear a noise of chariots and a noise of houses, even the noise of a great host. And they said to one another, Lo, the king of Israel hath hired against us the king of the Hittites and the kings of the Egyptians to come upon us. Wherefore they arose and fled in the twilight and left their tent and their horses and their asses and even the camp as it was and fled for their life. The Lord will cause your enemy to hear strange noise. They will come out of their hiding and run away from you. In the name of Jesus. The last verse we're reading this morning, verse number 8. And when these lepers came, how many were they? Wonderful. And when they came, when these lepers came to the utmost part of the camp, they went into one tent and did eat and drink and carried thence silver and gold and raiment and went and hid it and came again and entered into another tent and carried thence also and went and hid it. Father, add your blessing to your word. Amen. Lord, speak to me and speak through me. Amen. Prepare the ears of these your children to be open. To be, to be listening, the mind of spirit receptive to what the spirit of God has to say to the church. Let no man, let no woman leave this place where they came. But let, let everyone have a testimony that they have been in your presence. Sweet Holy Ghost, take control. Speak to me and through me and make me our blessing. In the name of Jesus. We covenant to God that at the end of this meeting, all of the glory and the honor and the adoration will be returned unto you. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Before you sit down, ask your neighbor and say, sit we here till we die. Say it one more time. You can take your seat as you go through this very, very quickly. You will excuse me as soon as I finish preaching, I will have to take my leave and go. Everyone, I believe sincerely this, I believe that virtually everybody in the world is born with some kind of disability or the other, some kind of advantage or disadvantage or the other. And somehow, many of us don't know how to manage these 
setback or disadvantage. Some of us, some of those things were, we were born with them. For instance, your background. So, for instance, you probably didn't go to school or you didn't go to enough school, acquire enough education. You probably left, you didn't go to a university or a higher institution. And so you look at yourself and say, but how can I make it? Some of you, you came from the village like me. And you don't think you could make anything in life. But let me explain this to you. Jesus Christ of Nazareth, our Lord and Master, is a perfect example of someone who had everything naturally working against him. For instance, the Bible tells me that he was born in a manger because there was no room for him in the inn. Does that make sense? Does come and talk to me this morning. But also beyond that, the Bible said as early as age one to two, he became a fugitive because Herod the king wanted to kill him. And a word came unto his father, Matthew chapter number two from verse number 12. The Bible says, arise, God spoke to Joseph in the vision and said, arise, take the child and his mother to Jerusalem, to, to Egypt, for there are people who seek his life to take it. So as early as age two, he became a fugitive. I mean, who would expect that you'll have made something in life before people begin to chase you? He hadn't even started life. He became a fugitive. Eventually, while he was trying to settle down, the angel came back and said, go back. Because those who seek you, they are dead. But then, in the village, as he played around, as he learned his trade, people look at him, and he showed flashes of anointing, flashes of wisdom, flashes of you know, things that are uncommon for him and his age. And he said, Mark chapter 6, verse number 3 to 5. Mark 6, 3 to 5. The Bible said, they said, when they saw all these good things in him, they said, is not this the carpenter? The son of Mary. Are his brothers James, Joseph, and Judah, and Simon, are they not with us? And they were offended at him. Do you understand what it is as a young child trying to come up and do some great things, and people say, mm, where is he coming from? What does he think he knows? Who does he say or think he is? Jesus said in Mark 6, 6 4, he said, a man, he said, a man is not accepted except in his own village. A prophet has no honor except in his village. Amongst his own kinsmen, amongst his own people. Maybe your life is like that. Like that. As you were growing up, nobody thought anything good of you, not even your parents. You have two, three, or three siblings, and they were probably doing better than you in school. And your parents spoke or talked down on you. I'm not even know what I'm talking about. And somehow you just don't think you can make it in life. L listen, Jesus had everything against him. Naturally, that could work was against him. The Bible said, as he grew up, as he began to minister, as he began to do exploit for God, everything he got was negative. Matthew chapter 12 when you read verse 24 down <clears throat> excuse me, Matthew 12 verse 24 down to 26, the Bible says one day as he was ministering and casting out devil, they came unto him and they said behold he casted out devil by the prince of Beelzebub. You know what that means? They say you're a fake pastor. Do you understand what it means? If you're a pastor and God is doing great things, they said mm, I think he's mixing up with something else and really, those things are damaging words that could take you out of course and out of your depth if you don't know here. But Jesus always had an answer for them. So if I, by the prince of Beelzebub, cast out devil, by whom the, your fathers do it, for a house divided against each other cannot stand, he said. Jesus didn't allow any of those things to get him down. John chapter 1 verse 10, the Bible says the word was made by him he came to the world, the world received him not. So what was working for him? Nothing. Next verse says, he, 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 he came to his own, his own received him not, but as many as received him, gave he power to become sons and daughters of God. Do you understand this? Nobody, nothing was working for Jesus. Nothing. But let me ask you a question. Did Jesus make it in life or not? Come and talk to me. He made it big because he did not allow his background to affect him. And I thank God for my life as well. As I told you, and some of you know me, I came from a village. 
you probably get to hear a bit more in another 10-15 minutes. Grew up in the village where you had little or no teachers. The teachers don't know even what to teach in the village. And if I had to look at my background, I should never have gone to school. Majority of my classmates are still in the village today, as you speak. And I'm talking of people who didn't go beyond primary school. I could remain, I could have been part of that today. But one of the things I learned is this, and learn this and learn it for good. You have no choice as to when you are born, where you are born, what sex you come in. But as soon as you come into the world, you are the sole determinant of who you become in life. If Jesus was going to allow his circumstances to rule his life, he would never become who God marked him out to become. Can I hear somebody say an amen? amen. Some of us have circumstances. You were probably born, everything was working well for you. But circumstances were thrust upon you after you came to the world. Maybe an accident. Maybe failure somewhere. Maybe, maybe a failed marriage. Maybe a lost spouse. Maybe a lost child. So many things that could happen in life that would make your emotional uh, stuff to be out of course. I mean, I've seen people, I had a friend when we were, when we were in the University of Ife in the 70s who had a girlfriend in, in Ibadan. I was always going to see her. He had a beautiful, a daughter, a, a beautiful car, a beautiful car. One day, as I was going to see the girl, he had a terrible accident. Before he knew it, the legs the left leg was completely severed. He didn't even know until he was trying to get out and realized he couldn't pick up the left leg. He became an amputee. Of course, that, that relationship broke up. Now, so you could see the double jeopardy. For him to have a kind of university, he must have come from a good, relatively good home. But situation and circumstance thrust upon him things that were beyond him. In 2 Samuel chapter 4, verse number 4, 2 Samuel 4, 4, the Bible talks of a man. The Bible says, and Saul had a son, jo uh, Jonathan, whose son was lame in his feet. And the reason is, be part of that scripture says, when the news came out of Saul and Jonathan, out of Jezreel, that they had been slaughtered, the Bible says the nurses who look, was looking after him took him, and as they fled, they dropped him, and he became lame in his feet. Now, this was someone supposed to be looking after him who dumped him. You know, there are so many people here in the church, in the body of Christ at large. Maybe you're even one of them today. Those who are supposed to be looking after you, they're the ones who abused you. I've heard of uncles who assaulted young girls, their nieces. Before, I've even heard of parents who assault the, the children, like, just like the nurses of of Mephibosheth in that scripture. And you know, that thing affected the poor boy. In Second, Second Samuel, I think chapter number 9, verse 8, this is what he says. When the king sent to him, he said, is there anyone, verse 1 says, is there anyone that is left of the house of Saul that I may show him mercy for the sake of Jonathan? When they eventually brought him in verse number 8, he says, who am I, O my king, that thou shouldest think of such a one as a dead dog? His sight was destroyed because he became lame in his feet. And the truth is, many of you are here, maybe because you failed an exam, maybe because you, you've lost someone that was close to you. You, you. Your life is almost completely being destroyed. But can I say this to you? Circumstances, situations, whether they're natural, whether they are accidental, should never, ever, ever, cause you to lose focus because you will have no excuse for not being who God has called you to be. Are you here? Romans chapter 1 verse 20. Romans chapter 2 verse 1. The Bible says thou art inexcusable O man. There will be no excuse good enough for you and I not to make it in life. Don't tell me because you failed an exam. Don't tell me because you lost your wife. Don't tell me because you lost a son. Don't tell me because it sucked you has affected your mental preparedness to make it in life. That would not be an excuse. It would never be sufficient excuse for God. Listen to these four guys called leprous men. They were so in no cause, they were so unsuccessful that the Bible did not even put names to them. It said four leprous men. 
you and I know what it is to be a leprous. You couldn't, in those days, you couldn't stay within the city. So, they were at the gates of Samaria. They couldn't go inside. By law. Even up to now, you know that leprous men don't live amongst people. It, it doesn't make sense. But one day, they have sat down there and they said, okay, can we make this a perfect excuse that we won't succeed in life because we are leprous? So, they began to appraise the situation. They said, sit, he said, shall we sit here? like this until we die verse number four i believe of our text and i believe for you to make a mark for you to be who god has called you to be we all ought to come to a point in life and we'll ask this question sit i here till i die you have a first degree you have a job civil service maybe or some salaries you want to ask yourself a question should i just sit down here like this till i die is that the best that God has made up for you? Certainly not. At one point in time or the other of my life, I asked that same question. Working with another lawyer, getting salary is good. But ultimately, for every profession, you must aspire to be on your own. You didn't hear what I just said. But you're so comfortable in your zone where you are because you get salary. It's assured at the end of the month, 30 days make a pay. It does not make a pay for someone who, who, who is going somewhere. Can I hear somebody say an amen? amen? Those guys had to do something about the situation. And I'm here to speak to someone that you can do better than you are doing right now. If you are not even doing good and you're finding excuses by, because of your background or because of some challenges in life, those things will fail you. You should stop saying those things and get up and do what you got to do. Can I hear somebody say an amen? amen? Three things those guys did, which you must do. Number one, you must appraise your situation. They said, sit we here until we die. The word sit is the word translated, if you like, to relax. To accept your failure is, is, is the word that's translated to, 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 to cover or sit upon the eggs you have hatched without hatching them. You're finding excuses that are not there. Why you are trying to explain your failure or why you couldn't succeed. Those guys, they sat down. You need to sit back. You need to appraise yourself. Am I where I should be? Am I where I want to be? Or if you're not there, is it because I am lame in my feet? Is it because I have failed I can? Is it because, because I know someone who did I can seven times, didn't make it and just, just left the whole thing. And he says, oh, I wish I qualified. I would have gotten this job. I would have got. Maybe that's not the will of God for you. There's nothing wrong with failure. What is wrong with failure is if you fail, you don't know what to do with it. President Buhari ran for presidency in this country three times. He failed today by the grace of God because he persisted. He's president. How many times have you attempted something you're giving up? Tap your neighbor and say, sit we here till we die. To sit means to rest and just sit back. To be inactive. To accept your state of failure. They said, do we have to sit here till we die? Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Then they analyzed the situation they were in. They said, if we went into the city of Samaria, they will fall upon us. They will kill us. So that is no option. Sorry. If, sorry. They said, if we sat here, hunger will kill us. Is that right? Two, if we went to this Samarian city, then there are two likely options. They might also kill us, but if they spare us, then we leave. In the first one, we had no choice. In the second one, we have two choices. Either way, death is staring us in the face, but there is an option that we may not die. So let's go there. Each time you're taking a bold step of faith, believe me, God has gone ahead of you. So 
So when they went into Syria, the Bible says God had made the Syrians to hear the noise of a host. And they said, the God of this people have sent Egyptians and Hevites and Hittites to fight us. So they fled and ran away. You need to sit down to consider seriously after praying the options that are open to you in life. There's more than one option. Tell your neighbor you have more than one option. Number one and number two. You have to hate your situation if you don't like it. You have to develop a hatred for your position which you don't like. Well, every Sunday I have to use my anti-malaria drug. Every Monday I have to do this. Every You are so resigned to it, you like it. So it continues with you. You got to sit back and appraise it. Do you like it or you don't like it? Because until you have a hatred, a divine, holy anger and hatred for that situation you don't like, it will not change. Come with me. First, come on, give God praise. Give God praise. Come with me. First Chronicles chapter number 4 and verse number 9 and 10. First Chronicles 4, 9 and 10. You know, this was an occasion of a young man that the mother bore. The Bible says, now uh, uh, Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. And his mother called his name Jabez because he bore him in sorrow. That's no child that was not born in sorrow. So why is his own different? And so every time they called him Jabez, Jabez he say, yes, mom, yes, Paul. And all he saw was sorrow and sorrow and sorrow. But in verse number 10, the Bible said one day, he said, no, I can't continue like this. And the Bible says, he cried unto the Lord his God, that thou mightest bless me indeed, that thou mayest enlarge my territory, that thy hands might be upon me, and that the enemy will not grieve me. And the Bible says, and the Lord granted. Until he became tired and rebelled against it, he continued to be sorrowful. If you don't like where, where, where you are, hate it with a passion. If you have to trust someone to give you money every time, stop it. The God who gives that person money, he can give you what you need. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. You know, there's this story that I always told. I'm not sure if I've shared it with you before. In life, I mean, I wish you could have an excuse that would justify whatever failure you're going through in life. None. I've told you the story before, I'm not sure whether it was in this church or elsewhere, of a man called Oscar Pretorius. The guy who killed his girlfriend recently in South Africa. Forget about the bad story, but his life for me has inspired me as a life until, or as a person until he committed murder. He became a double amputee at the age of three. I did a thorough study on him and I have videos recording on him. When he used to ride a bike in the premises, like every child would do, until he had this major health problem, they had to amputate, amputate both of his feet. Now, for a young man of that age, the future looked very bleak. Probably impossible. But he has asked himself the same question that the four leprous men asked themselves. Should I sit down here? And say, I'm a double amputee, so I can't make anything in life? He said, No. So they got two artificial uh, feet for him, and it began to train. For those of you who know, he held the, the uh, uh, African Championship gold medal for 100, for 200. He has the Olympic, Olympics, not just Africa now, 200 silver. He, 400, he also held it, silver. Olympics, two artificial legs. What is your excuse? In fact, they call him the fastest man on earth on no legs. That's how they describe him. They call him the blade runner because he doesn't have legs. 
You have two legs. You can't even do 50, square, 50 yards. What's the problem? Tap your neighbor, you have no excuse. I always share this with people. I said, my case is probably worse than the case of Oscar Pretorius. Except that I didn't have any medical ailment. But I was born in a village. Because I'm your senior pastor, you already know this, I'm sure. In a village where education was probably literally non-existent. And those of you, you know, I met your, your pastor when we were in university in the 70s. And everybody was, they were probably coming from King's School and all of that. I was coming from Uluorubo Grammar School. <laughs> you know, for once, I never felt intimidated by them. Your pastor had a car, was one of the very few people whose parents could have a car. I barely, I came to, they paid my school fees, but beyond that, there were no free us. Your pastor and all of those guys that went on holidays abroad, I did not see an aeroplane beyond the ones you see on the sky until I graduated. I did not go to a nursery school. No, what? I didn't. If you heard me speak in those days, But I decided that I don't have to die like that. You know, I, you know, I, I, the nursery rhymes that I knew, I knew them when I started having children. You can laugh all you will, but if you and I stood anywhere else without me talking, would you know that? And don't laugh at me, because the truth is that we also had our nursery rhyme. When I was growing up, my nursery rhyme was La Beigi Oro Oro Mbo. Come on, come on, don't pretend. Ilo Wadu Ara Waya. Come on, give the Lord a hand of praise. I decided that the fact that I learned under a tree should not make me inferior to anyone who learned in King's College. I decided I wasn't going to be a local pastor. And if I haven't preached in nations, it must be close to 50 than 40. And I can't even cope with the invitation to come and preach. By God's special grace, today, we are the leading law firm in shipping all over the world. From a village where there were no good schools, I have no legal right to succeed in life if I was going to base it on my, on my, on my, on my uh, family background or whatever it is. But I came out, out of that. I weaned myself from all of those disadvantages. And you can do the same. If I succeed, you can do even more. And you will do even more. <clears throat> in the name of Jesus. When I realized that and I chose that I would do something about my situation, God was with me. But the third and the most final and the most important thing was that it's not sufficient for you to appraise where you are sitting. It's not sufficient for you to also identify and to hate the current, the current position you are in. You must determine to do something about it. Everybody, you know, many, how many times have you said, oh, to sue me, I'm tired of it, of this life. How many times, even Elijah, the prophet said, I am not worthy, First Kings 19, 11 to 14, I'm not even deserving of life anymore. I, I only, I of all your ministers, I'm remaining. Take my life, he said to God. God said, you're not going anywhere, you better stand up, eat and drink, because the journey is far. Many times you give up on life because we don't understand that we don't have to sit down where we are until Jesus returns. You know, the enemy comes and gives you this religious spirit. Just, just go on, just managing life. You will make it to heaven. It's a lie from the bottom pit of hell. You don't have to suffer to enjoy in heaven. You enjoy on earth, you enjoy in heaven. As I said to people, that's me. Come on, give the Lord a hand of praise for that. 
If you don't understand Yoruba, pray for the spirit of interpretation of tongues of men. Hallelujah. I determined to do something about it. So I began to train myself. Apart from going to the University of Ife, I began to do a lot of private courses in English, in diction. I mean, you didn't want to hear me in those days. You, your pastor would not have even invited me, knowing his standard. But I chose. And if I, when I argue in court, some judges will say, you know, those of you who went to Cambridge, I say, okay, what? I wish I went to Cambridge. I always tell my children, if I went to the kind of schools that they went, I would by now be on the line to be the next PM of UK. But I didn't go to those schools. They can't say they're even better than me, even now with all their so-called spoken English. But I did something about it. The prodigal son said in Luke 15, 17, and when he came to himself, when he sat down and praised himself, I will arise and go, he said, and go to my father. Because how many of my father's higher servants have enough food and remnant left? Now I eat and beg him for food. He said, well, I will arise and go to my father and send to my father. I am not deserving to be called anymore your son. Make me one of your servants. That was the decision. But you know what? It followed through. Verse 19 says, and he arose. Everybody say, and he arose. Get up yourself, say, and I will arise. Get up, get up, get up, get up. Get up, say, and I will arise. It is not su- remain standing. It's not sufficient for you to make a decision to quarrel or fight or resist where you are that, with which you are not happy now. You must do something about it. And as he went, the Bible says, typically just like the, those four leprous men, God was already waiting for him. The father saw him and ran to meet him. As you arise from that present position that you are not happy with, can I say to you that God is already waiting for you? He will meet you where you are coming from. He will take you to where you ought to be. In the name of Jesus. Ask your neighbor, sit we here till we die. Say, nay, I will arise and go and be who God has called me to be. Say, nothing will put me down. Not my family background, not my lack of sufficient education, not my failure in the past, nothing. And so shall it be to you. In the name of Jesus. Bow down your head and let us pray together. Father, thank you. Thank you for this awesome message. A message of encouragement, a message of chastisement. To those of us who are too comfortable in certain zones we find ourselves. To those of us who are making excuses that because of our background, because of some failure in the past, we can't make it in life. Obama had, oh God, a Kenyan heritage. It is, the, the, the books in America is clear that the black man is discriminated against so seriously. They are killed every other month. But this man decided that he would not be put down by his background. He became the most powerful man on the earth. We have no excuse not to succeed. Every spirit of excuse in this church. Lord, I destroy them in the name of Jesus. Every reason to fail justifiably. Lord, I cancel it in the name of Jesus. Every spirit of stagnancy, sitting down one, in one place for years, Lord, I break that power over your people in this church. In the name of Jesus. Lord, I ask that you open the eyes of understanding of these people and the grace to get up and arise from where they are sitting and take possession of that which belongs to them and release upon them right now. In the name of Jesus. By the time I come back here, oh God, before the end of this year, let testimonies flow. Of men and women who are taking their positions, regardless of whatever circumstances may be bestowed upon them. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. We give you all the glory. We give you all the praise. Jesus, mighty name, we pray. Come on, give God praise. Give God praise.
Better. I'm sure we can do it better. I said, I'm sure we can do it better. Praise the Lord. Has anyone been blessed here today? Has anyone been blessed here today? The Bible says it shall come to pass in that day. Perhaps today. When the body shall be lifted off your shoulder. And the yoke from off thy neck. And by the reason of anointing. The Bible says yokes shall be broken. You know my understanding of that? My understanding of that is that you will have to determine the day. And perhaps today is the day. Can we put our hands together for Jesus once again? All right, I just want us to very, very quickly pray for, pray for the man of God. He's, he has to go. He has an appointment somewhere. But we can, let's pray for him. Let's, let's, let's stretch forth our hands onto that direction where he is right now. He's, he's going towards his car. Let's begin to pray. Let's begin to decree. Let's begin to confess certain things concerning him. Let's ask for a refill that God will fill him and continually as long as he stands before God the unction to function God will give unto him in the name of Jesus let's come against every imagination every conspiracy every design from the pit of hell concerning him and his family let's come against them violently let's declare that it is well with him that his oil will not run dry that God will divinely protect him and protect his family in the name of Jesus. That as he, come, as he has come here today to bless us, God will bless him in return. He has made some things happen for us today. God will make things happen for him in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. Lord, we give you praise. In Jesus' mighty name we are praying. Without wasting time, Father, we will go on to take our second hymn. On Calvary, years I spent in vanity and pride. Praise the Lord.
Hallelujah. Let's just wave our hands to the King of Glory. Just say something nice to your God. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we bless your name this morning. Draw me close to you. Never let me go. I lay all down again to hear you say that I'm your friend. You are my.
Grace Coral more as they go back to their seats. As you have your seat in the presence of the Lord. Praise the Lord. I want you to also celebrate the message we just heard from Pastor Atoebi. And I'm going to make an altar call. The first thing he said about his message is for you to first appraise your situation. Determine you're going to do something. And you do something about it and that the Lord will meet you at your point of need. But first, before God meets you at your point of need, you first need to give your life to God. So if there's anybody in the house that you want to rededicate your life or you want to give your life to the Lord, I want you to step forward this morning to the altar. Is there anybody in the house that wants to rededicate their life to the Lord? So I guess we've given our lives to the Lord. Okay, celebrate yourself. Okay, as we move forward, we're going to take our tithes. I want you to prepare your tithes. As I invite Grace Corral back, I want you to prepare your tithes this morning. Do we have our tight envelopes? Ushers? Okay, let's rise. I want you to lift your tight envelope up and I want you to pray over your tight. Sorry for those giving their tights. For those giving their tithes, I want you to step forward. Okay, lift up your tithes. Heavenly Father, we thank you for those giving their tithes this morning. We we'll cover them with the blood of Jesus. We pray, Lord, that as they give this morning, you will also meet them at their point of need. We pray, Lord, as they have heard the word this morning, you will give them the strength to arise in the name of Jesus. You will give them the strength to move forward in the name of Jesus. And I also pray that grace will be extended to them in the mighty name of Jesus. As they give this morning, Lord, make them a thousand times numerous than what they are in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we've prayed. Amen. Can you now, church? Your your offering. I want you to put something good in your offering, something befitting unto the Lord. As you've heard the message this morning, I also want you to also take that step of faith. And as you rise, a quick prayer over your offering. Receive grace, Kural, and the ushers will direct us.
rejoicing never end in our homes in the mighty name of Jesus. Can you have your seat in the presence of the Lord? Church, I have more great news for you. Praise the Lord. We're going to be posting bands this morning. For Sister Ola Olua additional. Grace Corral. Sunday, Gomani of Redeemed Christian Church of God, Osana Paris. Praise the Lord. Today is a double portion day. I also have Sister Nene Basi of Ocean Department and Brother Edem Bottini of Covenant Christian Center, Lagos. Where is Sister Nene Basi? always come from different churches to I think it's time we send our own men out to also praise the Lord. I want you to celebrate them once again. They have gone through the rites and fulfilled the process of leading to marriage but we still need to bring them before the church. Now, if you have a reason, a good reason, why they should not be joined. I'm not saying because you like the sister or you like the brother. But if you have a reason, I'm going to count from one to hundred. One. Two. Hundred. You think I was going to count from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 to 100? No, I said 1 to 100. Praise the Lord. All right. I want us to stretch our hands towards them as you kneel down. Hold your hands. Kneel down. I want you to stretch your hand towards them. Heavenly Father, we lift up your children into your presence this morning as they have taken the step to marry. Lord, we commit the day into your hands. We pray to be a glorious day. That every need will be supplied, my Lord. And it shall be a beautiful day, Lord. Whatever storm brewing towards that day, we command there to be peace in the mighty name of Jesus. We also use them as contact points for those waiting on the Lord for a day like this. Lord, it shall come to pass in the mighty name of Jesus. And so, Lord, we thank you. We honor you. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. We can rise. I want you to celebrate them as they go back to their seats. Church, as I said earlier, today is a special day. We have more celebration. We have a baby dedication this morning also. And I want you to receive Minister Jide Laughingham on continuation of the service. 
We receive him with the joy of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Well, um, it, it's a double um, portion of um, baby dedication again today. Wow. We will be dedicating two babies today. So please join me very quickly.